Well, hi, I'm John Hart. Welcome back to Mr. America Hart. Today, we're talking about dumbbell laterals, side laterals, most people call them. First of all, I want to point out to y'all, welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been really, really great. In 2022, we've had a really great run, and uh, I really do appreciate all your input. Your comments are welcome down below in the comments section of all my videos. Uh, I love to see them, and I do read them. So, all right, let's get to it. Dumbbell laterals. You notice I call them dumbbell laterals. Dumbbell side laterals is redundant in my world. So uh, the only time I ever use the word side laterals is if I'm de delineating or uh, separating out that one exercise from other forms of laterals if I'm in a discussion about that. But for today's video and purposes, I'm talking about dumbbell side laterals with your arms going out to the side like that, holding on to a dumbbell in your hands, uh, that one movement, what is the problem with it? Well, I've uh, talked about it in other videos, and I want to restate the position, which is uh, the lever being your arm. The lever is so long coming off of your shoulder that when you have a, a weight in your hand and you project it way out to the side like that, that lever is so long. And the muscle that we're trying to target, the cap of the shoulder, the, the medial head, of your deltoid, that muscle right there, okay, is disadvantaged leverage-wise. Leverage-wise, it cannot generate a ton of force when your hand is way out there, okay? Now, why is that a big deal? Well, over time, now I'm not talking about a beginner. I'm not talking about an intermediate. I'm not even talking about some advanced bodybuilders, as an advanced bodybuilder, a competitive advanced bodybuilder, natural bodybuilding myself, uh, I was interested in having all the fine details. I was interested in having, you know, maximum development of each muscle group. I would do laterals. Would I do dumbbell laterals altogether, both arms at the same time? Not quite as often. And I'll explain why in a moment. I'll get to that later on. However, let me point out, when that lever... In the course of years of training, when that lever, your arm, and the deltoid is overloaded year after year after year, we are practicing progressive resistance here, are we not? This is bodybuilding, is it not? We are practicing progressive resistance even if we're a weekend warrior, are we not? Because progressive resistance, we lift weights to get either more muscle growth, hypertrophy, or strength. Or at the very least, to maintain that strength. Okay, so decide what it is you're doing. If you are going to be attempting to increase the look of your body, more muscle, increase the strength of your body, more strength, then therefore you are going to be going down the road of progressive resistance training. And in doing so, over the course of years and years, you're going to make attempts at lifting slightly heavier weights for slightly more repetitions or within a certain repetition range. You can see how the math on an exercise like a dumbbell lateral, that lateral motion over the years, how much weight do you think you can lift with your hand way out there, two and a half feet, a foot and a half, however long your arm is, away from your deltoid? Well, the truth is, is that it's not going to be very, very much. And you'll notice some guys will say, well, I do heavy dumbbell laterals, 55 pounds. I have seen Bertle Fox back in the day do heavy dumbbell laterals, you know, with you know, 70 pounds, whatever the number is. And first of all, there are certain freaks out there, no doubt, okay, who have that kind of strength potential to lift big weights. However, you'll also notice that when they're lifting those big weights, the dumbbell is no longer way out there when they're doing that dumbbell lateral. The dumbbell is here. They've changed the movement. They bend their elbows more. They shorten the lever. So now the dumbbell is only a foot and a half out from their side as opposed to being two and a half feet out from their side. Now, what does that do? Well, simple biomechanics. You've just made it so that you can, yeah, you can lift a whole bunch more weight in your hand on a shorter lever, much like getting into a machine and doing lateral raises in a machine. 
what is the advantage of using a machine instead of throwing the dumbbell way out there? Well, the machine, the weight is loaded on your elbows. If the weight is loaded on your elbows, it's a much shorter lever. There's less strain on the shoulder joint itself, okay? As long as you don't go crazy overloading yourself with massive amounts of weight, even on that. So, which brings me to the next phase of what I'm going to talk about with these laterals. Uh, I'm going to get to that one too. I won't forget. So, what is the case that I'm making? I'm saying as a beginner, as an intermediate, as an advanced, even competitive bodybuilder, you should be training the caps of your shoulders, the medial head of your shoulders, doing lateral raises. Okay, this is not saying that it's a don't ever do them exercise. It's a as time passes, you're not going to be able to do them type exercise without risking damage to your shoulder joint, to the side of your neck, to your traps. And those who know, know exactly what I'm talking about. Over time, if you're used to hauling big weights in your hands and reaching out to the side as far as you normally used to do when you were a beginner or intermediate with those dumbbells, the fact is, is eventually doing them at the same time, it's going to put a lot of stress on the traps and on the neck. And you're going to use body English to get the, the weight moving. That means your lower back. That's going to happen. It's going to happen. You, you can watch people using heavy weights on dumbbell laterals. They're not doing it strict. They're not even attempting to stop the weight. I'm not saying you should, but I am saying strict, yes, you should use pretty good form. So what do I do? One of the uh, discoveries I found on dumbbell laterals is to change it to doing alternate. One, two, left, right, left, right. And I can't fully explain why, but uh, doing them alternating left, right, left, right, there's a much greater focus on the deltoid muscle the weights that can be used are still pretty good. And you can gain much more control focusing on one delt at a time. So you can get better control of the weight that way. So I like shifting it to alternate dumbbell laterals over time. That's the first thing. And then down the line, when you have access to a good machine, then yes, go with the machine as opposed to shortening the lever like a lot of pro bodybuilders have done. The problem with shortening the lever, bending your arm a lot, is that now you engage your rotator cuff a lot. If you engage your rotator cuff a lot with a heavy weight in your hand, you'll damage that rotator cuff over time. So that's a poor dumbbell lateral when you bend the elbows a lot. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't recommend that. I don't have clients do that. I've never had them do that over the course of you know the last 40 years. So that's where that's at. So I do prefer using a machine down the line. Okay, so that's preferred. And then going ahead and doing, you know, having a shorter lever, obviously. But down the line, eventually, you'll find that doing something like, you can always train your rear delts, by the way, doing dumbbell bent over laterals, doing lying side laterals, doing machine rear laterals, all of those develop not just the posterior head of your deltoid, but they do involve the medial head as well. You can also use more pressing motions, dumbbell, shoulder presses, barbell, shoulder presses. Hey, if it doing directly overhead bothers you, angle the bench back a little bit. Take the pressure off your neck, but you'll still hit those delts very hard. And it does not isolate just the anterior part of your deltoid. That's not the case at all. It uses both the anterior and the medial head of your delts to a great degree. So you'll still get great work on that medial head of your delt as you are already so advanced at that point. Am I clear on that? All throughout this video, I've been saying that as you advance, right? So that's it for today. So from my heart to you, John Hart. Oh, before I go, listen, if you want more details on training and using certain routines or exercise combinations, you can always go to my website, mramericaheart.com. I've written several books on training and how I use it for myself and clients. And those books will be Mr. America's Shape Up series. It will be Physique 101. And then I also have one for beginners called Year One in the Beginning. So pick up one of them, read the book descriptions on my website just to see what they're all about and then make your choice. Maybe buy all three. It's a fair price. You can download them through my website or you can get a paperback on Amazon. 
And that's it for today. From my heart to you, off to my left, you're going to see a disc pop up right now. That is the subscribe button for my channel. Please give that thing a tap, won't you? And then down below, off to your left, you're going to see a thumbs up button down there. Will you tap that and turn it blue? That lets the YouTube algorithm know how much you like my videos. And I like it too. See you soon.